Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to a new video. So today I'm going to be taking you through my 2019 Facebook CBO testing strategy. Um, it's going to cost you about $100 or £100. I realize a lot of people are on quite tight budgets when it comes to Facebook ads. So if you only have, say, £100 to spend to dedicate towards testing, then in my opinion, this is the most cost effective way to do so. So the way I'm going to structure this video then is I'm going to take you through the actual strategy itself step by step and then I'm actually going to take you through my ad manager account and show you how actually how to set it up um, just so there's no kind of like grey areas, you know exactly what you're doing. Now before we jump into it, I just want to very quickly mention I am giving away a free one-to-one -one consultation call in this video. I do in every single video. So if you want that daily chance to win that then make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, and all you have to do then to enter is really easy to do in fact all you have to do is subscribe to my youtube channel um, like this video and leave a comment below and it can be any comment you want it can be a video suggestion it can be um, i like ecom it can be my name it can be jack is the best whatever it is just leave a comment down below um, and then make sure you tune into my next video where the winner will be announced if you commented on my previous video then just make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one or if you don't want to watch the video just skip straight to the end um, where i'm going to be announcing the winner of my previous one so that being said guys thanks for tuning in i hope you enjoy the video and uh, let's get straight into it so here we are then let's get straight into it um, firstly i do apologize for the audio and the video quality if it's not very good i'm currently in the process of moving so so I've got like this makeshift setup. However, hopefully it shouldn't affect um, the value of this video. Anyway, two very quick points then before we get into the strategy, purely because I want you to realize that when it comes to running Facebook ads, there's two separate kind of things that you should be doing. There's testing and there's scaling. You need to be doing one or the other, and depending on what your goal is will depend on how you spend your money, how you dedicate your budget, and the kind of things you do. So the, the, pretty much the premise in which this strategy is based on. So first things first, then testing is data gathering. We are given Facebook X amount of dollars, X amount of pounds, and in return, it's gonna give us data on our ad sets, and from that data, we can decide what to do with it. Number two, the point of testing then is to find an audience that responds well to your ad so you can scale it. Now, what exactly does this mean? If you're on a tight budget, then by far, this is the most efficient way to do it, unless you've got thousands of pounds to dedicate, say, $500, um, put ad set to test or to scale an ad set immediately then this is the strategy in which i recommend you follow purely because you want to double down and focus the majority of your budget on those ad sets that you know already have the best chance and by following this strategy those ad sets are going to reveal themselves so you can put the majority of your budget into the ones that have the best chance therefore you're going to be spending your money more efficiently any questions by the way on any of this that doesn't make sense or perhaps haven't forgot to mention something feel free leave a comment down below um, i do respond and answer every single question so it won't go unanswered so the way in which this strategy is structured then, we're gonna be using a website conversion campaign and our objective is going to be purchases. We're gonna set a $25 daily budget. We're gonna run it for four days total, hence the $100 or 100 pounds, depending on what currency you're using, will be the total spend. And by the time you spend all that then, there's gonna be a handful, a couple of different ad sets that'll be better performing than the others and they're going to be the ad sets that we're going to choose to go ahead and scale however there will be more on that later on in the video age wise then because we're testing we need to find which ages respond the best to our ads so we can focus purely on the ones that are working therefore i want you to cover all age ranges 18 to 65 plus tends to be where i start unless i know specifically what age ranges i want to target I want you, for the same reason i want you to go for all genders unless you're 100 percent sure which genders are going to purchase your product then i always recommended testing both because you never know especially if it's a niche that you're not quite sure of then it can be difficult to pinpoint exactly who's going to be buying your product and you might be surprised too so play it safe and test all genders and all age ranges detail targeting wise so in my opinion this is where the money is made and this is the difference between a skillful facebook marketer and a not so skillful one and it comes down to the actual interests you choose and the way you narrow your audience or the way that you don't narrow your audience i'm a big believer um, i've followed this for the last three years of using flex targeting which is where you narrow your audience um, it works for me, it has done for all that time. So this is the strategy in which I recommend you guys implement. Um, and basically we're gonna be choosing at least two different interests. So as it says in brackets, times one flex. So what that basically means, I will explain and show it later on in the video. But what it basically means then is we have our base interest, we then narrow it by at least one extra interest. 
In terms of placements then, I want you to go ahead for Facebook and Instagram newsfeed only, purely because Instagram is becoming more and more popular. People are, I know it sounds stupid, but it's 100% true. People in my course have confirmed this. They've been seeing the same kind of things. I've seen it in my own, is that more and more people seem to be buying from Instagram. So I want you to include the both again, so we can test all bases. And the reason I want you to go for newsfeed only then is purely because on a newsfeed, you've got the best chance of getting somebody's attention. So if you can't sell your product with that best chance, the chances are you're not gonna be able to sell it anywhere else. So you need to give yourself that the best chance as possible. So when it comes to making the decision of whether you want to scale it or not, you know that you've given it this best chance and you're not making decisions based on false information, if that makes sense. As it says there in brackets, if it doesn't work on newsfeed, then the chances are it won't work at all. Moving on to the next point then, which is a very, very, very important point. Please don't skip this bit and I'll explain why. So what I want you to do is to set a rule for each ad set so it has a maxed spend limit of five pounds, five dollars, again, depending on what currency you're using. And the reason for this being then, as it says here, is a fair test. So. When you are testing ad sets against each other, it has to be a fair test. Otherwise, the results you're getting are gonna be skewed. There's not gonna be that average, that medium, and therefore, it's gonna be difficult to decide which ones are actually performing better. So for example then, if you were to run an ad set and spend $500 on it, and then compare that against an ad set that's only had $5 spent on it, it's not a fair comparison because the one that's had more spend has had more time to test, has had more time to optimize, and therefore the results won't be as equivalent versus the lower spend one. So to make it a fair test, you have to spend the same amount of budget per ad set, and you do that then by setting a rule. Final point then is we're gonna duplicate this ad set that we created, I'll show you in a second how to do so. We're gonna duplicate it four times and the only thing we're gonna be changing then is the actual detail targeting section, which is gonna be the interests that we're actually targeting. And the reason being then for this to change the interest targeted is because we wanna reduce the chances of audience overlapping. And what that means is that if you're running two ad sets against each other and they're targeting the same audience, it's gonna drive up our costs because they're gonna be competing against each other. So by changing the interests per ad set, then obviously we reduce that risk. So why does this strategy actually work then? Four points, number one is a fair test when comparing ad sets, I just explained it then, but if you were to organize a running race and you were to have say Usain Bolt in that race and then everybody else was say somebody who had never sprinted before in their life that's not a fair race so you couldn't compare them evenly if that makes sense it's not a great analogy but hopefully it kind of illustrates the point a little bit um, number two is the four day runtime gives time for optimization and the average F, uh, FB the average Facebook user to see the ad so um, when it comes to Facebook ads, I like to do loads of research in terms of customer behavior and how often people are using the platform. And one of the things I come across was that the average Facebook user actually only uses Facebook every other day, which I found quite interesting. I didn't quite believe that. So what I like to do is run my ads for at least four days. That way you've got a better chance of showing your ad to the average person in your audience. The second point then, the four day runtime gives time for optimization and the average Facebook user to see that ad. So when it comes to Facebook ads, um, I would consider myself a nerd. I love to do hours of research into customer behavior and the average Facebook user, um, purely because the more you understand that sort of thing, then I think the better chance it gives you. Anyway, one of the things I learned, which was actually quite surprising to myself, is that the average Facebook user actually only uses Facebook every other day. So by running an ad for four days, you just give it the best chance of showing it to potentially everybody in the audience, if that makes sense. If you were to only run it over the course of one day, then you're not showing your ad to the average user. It's all about averages, it's all about data, and the better averages you have to work on, then the more informed and accurate decisions you can make. Like I said, any questions on this, by the way, just let me know. Point number three then, newsfeed is the best opportunity to, to work. So it's the biggest space on somebody's phone, on somebody's desktop, regardless of whether they're using Facebook or Instagram. So if you can't get your ad to capture somebody's attention and get them to click on your ad being the biggest thing on the page, the chances are you're not gonna be able to do it on other sites um, or other places or other sections of the screen. Point number four then, by following this strategy, it tests the entire audience. So when you find those sweet spots, like it might be women, um, over the ages of 45, for example, when you find that sweet spot, then you can focus the majority of your budget purely on those people that are working. You'll hear 
Loads of different people talk about this. It's about doubling down on what's working and being the most profitable. Certainly within dropshipping, it's very important because especially when you become VAT registered, then profit margins are very slim. So the more profitable you can be, then the better. And one way you do this then is just by purely focusing on those most profitable sweet spots. So depending on a particular gender and different age, the placements, etc. And by following this strategy, then we're testing absolutely everything. So that being said, then that is the strategy itself. This is how it works. Um, in terms of actually creating this, this is how we do it. So Facebook ad account, create, I'm gonna start over. So we can do the whole thing from the beginning. We want a conversion campaign. We're gonna name this. So this is gonna be the name of your products. And then we're gonna turn CBO on and we're gonna set the daily budget then as according to the strategy at 25 pounds per day. We can click on show more options. There's nothing there at this moment in which we need to change. So just simply go ahead and click continue. And it's now gonna take you into the ad set level of things where we can change things like the targeting, etc., and so on. The next step then is to select the purchase pixel event in this box here. If you haven't ran any ads before, then yours will be shown in red. To get it in green, all you simply have to do is run a quick test purchase. Moving on to the audience selection of things, we're not gonna be targeting any custom audiences. We want all age ranges, we want all genders, and then this is where we're gonna do the, the important bit in my opinion. This is where the money is made because it comes down to the actual audience that we specifically want to target. So following the strategy then, we want a base interest. So if we're in the golf niche, for example, I'm gonna target golf as a interest. Make sure you've got the correct one, sports and outdoors golf. Um, I'm gonna untick this box as well so we have a true representation of how big this particular audience is. And this is the base interest. Now, the reason I want to flex it, i.e. click narrow audience, is because our potential reach is now 9.2 million people. To go out and target that amount of people spending $5 per day, I haven't done the maths, but you're probably gonna be testing like 0.0001% of an audience, and that's just not an adequate amount to get a realistic representation of how good this audience is or not. So to counteract that then, to make sure we're targeting a high quality specific audience, all we want to do then is simply go ahead, click narrow audience, and start putting some more golf interests into here to get this potential reach number down a bit. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on how to pick interests because I have done a specific video topic purely on that subject. Um, but for the sake of this video then, I'm gonna put in Sergio Garcia, if I can spell it correctly and then see what this does to our potential reach. It's down to 51,000 people. Now that's quite small in fact, so I'm gonna add some more people in here. Let's go for Phil Mickelson. I know he's a bigger golfer, we're a bit more popular. Our potential reach is 97,000 people, so we're getting there. Let's add in somebody else as well. Let's go for Jordan Spieth, if he is available. He is indeed. So 170,000 people then, in the beginning, spending only $5 per day for this particular ad set, then 170,000 people, in my opinion, is a good range because, for example, if we were to click this box, our potential reach goes up to 2.9 million people, which is absolutely huge. It's a massive audience. This is the biggest fault I see a lot of beginners making is targeting audiences that are just way too big. So stick with a high quality and specific audience and trust me, your results are gonna be a lot better. Moving down then into the next stages of this strategy, placement wise as following the strategy, we wanna make sure rid of audience network, rid of messenger, those two are great for retargeting ads, but these are the initial ads. So all we want then is the news feeds. So let's get rid of all of these. Get rid of that one and that one. And all we've got left then is the news feeds and our potential reach is still at 170,000 people, which is great. As you tick and untick some of these, that may change. So just keep an eye on that and make sure it stays at a decent amount. When it comes to a decent amount, then I haven't gone through this. In fact, I would say anywhere under 500,000 people is a pretty nice amount of people. Um, anything more than that, then I tend to find that you're not gonna be testing an adequate percentage of the audience and your budget is just gonna get lost amongst that significant amount of people, if that makes sense. Any questions, by the way, I've said it before, but honestly, ask as many questions as you need to. Um, there's no point watching this video if it doesn't make sense to you. So honestly, email me, DM me, leave a comment below, um, and I will get back to you. So this is the interesting bit then. This is where we make sure we're running a fair test. So just open up the extra options and we're gonna leave it as a seven day and one day click. Again, I've done a video topic on that, so I'm not gonna go into that. 
But what we want to change then is this section here then. So add set spend limits. We're gonna go ahead, click edit, add spend limits, and we're gonna set a maximum to five pounds. And what that's gonna do then is make sure that every single day this ad set spends no more than five pounds. We've set our CBO daily budget at 25 pounds. So obviously there's still 20 pounds of room in there. And then this is where essentially once we've created the ad set, we can go into our ad manager, duplicate it four times, change the actual detailed specific targeting. And therefore we're gonna be left with five ad sets, each with a rule of spending no more than $5 per day. So once you've done that then guys, what are the next steps? Hopefully you're still with me. Me. basically what we've done is we've set this up we're gonna let it run for four days and then once we've let it run for four days these are going to be the next steps number one we're gonna take the best performing ad set so one at a time and we're gonna scale that particular ad set um, but in the meantime we're gonna keep the CBO running and these are kind of like the um, these should be kind of swapped out really just to make sure it flows nicely so start from the beginning we're gonna take the best performing ad set one at a time and we're gonna scale it in terms of choosing the best performing ad set, there's kind of there's a few different things you want to look at, but the main ones being the cheapest cost per link click, not just click, link click. That is a higher value event because what that essentially means is somebody's clicked on the link to go to your website and therefore they've shown interest enough to want more information. You can also base it on the most sales if by all means, if you've had sales at this point, then sales are obviously a very good sign and next thing is engagement engagement is really important because it shows that the audience you've selected is actually responding and interested in your product that is why they're engaging with it duplicate the best performer then one at a time so you can focus the majority of your budget on the ad set that has the best chance this is by far the most efficient way um, to spend your marketing budget we're going to duplicate it into a new purchase campaign so not a cbo just in a campaign on its by itself and we're going to set the budget then to 20 pounds or 20 dollars per day um, in the meantime then whilst you're doing this you can keep your cbo running if you so choose to obviously the more data you have within that cbo then the more efficient decisions you can make because obviously the more money you spend the more data you have so the easier it becomes to make that decision on which one to scale. Hopefully you guys are still with me. I realize I'm talking quite quick, so I'm gonna try and slow it down a bit and explain this a bit better. So once you've duplicated that best performer then from this testing campaign that we've just gone through, I want you to let it run for another four days for the same reasons I explained earlier, just to give it a chance to optimize, to give Facebook a chance to find who the best audience is, to make sure you capture the average user within that particular audience. It just gives it the best chance for it to succeed. Whilst you're running this ad set then, which is your best performer, you can, it is optional, I should put that in brackets really, because you don't have to keep this CBO running, but the advantage of keeping it running is that the more data that goes through it, then the more informed decisions you'll be able to make. So it goes back to that whole point of, if you have those ad sets and each ad set has had a million impressions, then the chances are the data you'll have will show a better average of that particular audience, if that makes sense. If, For example then, if you go out into the street and you ask 10 people whether they like your product or not, and then you go out to the street the next day and you ask say a thousand people, you're gonna have a better average by asking a thousand people than you will by 10 people. And it's the same thing. So it is optional. It all comes down to how much you actually want to spend. That being said, then guys, I really hope I've explained that well. I really do mean it. It doesn't matter how many questions you ask me, I will answer every single one. Please don't come away from this video not knowing um, how this strategy works. Please do make sure it makes sense to you. And trust me, this is by far the most cost-effective way to go out there and test your audiences. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my free eBooks in the video description below. There's five different ones, each on every different aspect of your dropshipping business. So check them out. The feedback on them has been awesome. So I'm sure you'll like them. Um, and that being said, then let's get into announcing the winner of the previous video. So let's get the random. So here we are then guys on my previous video. Um, thank you very much for the support on this, by the way, 2000 views and 114 likes is absolutely awesome. Uh, so let, yeah, anyway, let's get into the announcing the winner. I'm just gonna take the link, paste it in here, YouTube comments, 50 unique comments, which is absolutely awesome. Thank you very much, guys. Um, and the winner then of the previous video is Wang Peter. So thank you very much for your comment. Hit me up on Instagram is probably the best way and we can get that call arranged. Guys, if you just wanna get straight down to business and stop trying your luck, you can actually book a call right away. 
um, just check out the video links in the description below. And that being said then guys, thanks for sticking with me. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.